Hey guys, this is Dan, and I'm here to teach you about Label Legends and Vectorworks. We're going to start real quick by importing a couple of different symbols. Uh, one of them is going to be a symbol of mine that I've custom built that I use as a lighting device that corresponds with LightRite so I can see symbols as they're placed and what cables they have, where they start, where they end, so on and so forth. And we're also going to insert a Mac Ultra. As you can see, whenever you insert a lighting device, there is already a lab label legend that is associated with it. Oops, I accidentally installed another Mac Ultra there that I don't necessarily need for this presentation. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to find my breakout that I have custom built and I'm going to activate it. Having a little bit of trouble here activating it, but whatever. I'm going to activate it, insert it, and we're done. As you can see, it's a pretty cool little device there. It's got a little breakout head and a big breakout head, so it's visible whenever you draw it on plots, but then it's small whenever you need to get rid of the bigger stuff to make it look nice and pretty, as we all like to do. I'm going to insert some basic information here about the fixtures and see what exactly this label legend already has installed on it. As you can see, it's got channel and a unit number, but it doesn't have purpose. And what are the other things that we have? So we're going to go take a look real quick and see if it has any of the other things that I thought that it had, which it obviously does not. So I was trying to activate a visualizer tool, a visibility tool that whenever I hover over an object, it would show me the class, but the class disappears right there. Um, so something for you guys to know about that visibility tool. If you're ever curious what layer or class something is in, it's a great way to easily find out. But I'll get on to that later. Right now, go into the Label Legend Manager, and we're going to go Edit 2D Layout. I'm say no to that right now. It just wants me to save the document as I've created this just for this video. But yeah, we see that we got color and we've got dimmer. Now, dimmer is important uh, for other things later on. But for now, we're just going to plug in these items, at a number that says A1, for instance. A1 would be a circuit that's uh, associated with MOLT1, circuit 1 and so on and so forth. But that becomes an automated thing later on. And of course, color is the other thing. As you can tell, this is kind of more, more or less meant for an ellipsoidal or a conventional LED fixture, or a conventional fixture or an LED ellipsoidal, so on and so forth. It's not really meant for moving lights. So we want to customize this to be just for us. And I'm also just putting in some basic stuff here that I want for my breakout as well. The object info palette is your best friend in Vectorworks. Okay, now that I'm done with that, you can see that these symbols that are already there, the octagon and the circle, are something that's been associated with uh, basic plots for a long time. It was originally, I believe, set up by USIT or USITT. Uh, but now we're going to go and, as you can see, you can change the label legends in the object info palette. And since there's already one applied, we can use some of the base structure off of that one to create a new one from that lighting fixture. So we go entertainment, lighting, create lighting la label legend from lighting device, and then you name it. I'm just naming this one moving light basic. And then... Now you can see that it's set, but there hasn't been any changes. So let's go change it. Entertainment, lighting, and label legend manager. And then we're going to highlight our moving light one that we just made and go through and select the ones in 2D that we want to use. As you can see on the right side, you got container types. I'm not a big fan of containers, so I'm just gonna turn those off. And you got four different types right there, but we're just gonna turn them off. Of course, I want channel, I want universe address. Um, for custom gobos, I wanna make sure that I have the gobo activated. I'm gonna deactivate the dimmer like I've already done. 
And then I think that's about it for this one. I'm just confirming that there's not anything else that I want to do. And then I'm going to say, OK, nope. And I scroll down and do right road reading. Now, this might be something that's going to mess us up later on, but we're going to go from there and we'll figure that out. And then also, I want to adjust the alignment for the stuff I selected. I like to do everything center aligned unless it's for specific objects such as breakouts or uh, data elements or Socapex. Um, there's specific ways that I've made stuff that works with my symbols and that also integrates, again, all your all your lighting device um, parameters integrate with LightWrite. So it just makes documentation that much better. Okay, and as you can see, we've turned those on, but now they don't line up with where I want them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go to the manager again. We're going to select moving light basic, and I'm actually going to activate it. And then I'm going to edit the 2D layout. And here we're going to move stuff to where we want it, and then we'll work on the sizing. So get stuff kind of close. It's obviously a bit too big, so I'm going to change the font size on that. Get it down to somewhere that I like. And then I'm going to move channel. I like channel to be just outside of that little circle. And that circle on those fixtures is basically defining the minimum distance you want between that and the fixture next to it. Uh, this is asking me to save again, and I really don't care for saving this file. I'm just making it for you guys. So uh, we're going to move universe address. This is probably one of my favorite bits of this, especially whenever you're creating drawing specific and you're not you doing trust tapes for smaller shows you can get it in there i also like to apply a color to it once it's all centered up and put a solid background so anything behind it doesn't bleed over into it and with the universe address my favorite color is green for that one we can get more into that later okay i think i'm pretty happy with it now let's go and see and now it's applied it to our fixture as you can see, there's unit number. Unit number for me is a number that is primarily for the electrician, while channel number, the 301, is for the programmer. And then as we change stuff in our object info palette, uh, we can see that the universe address has changed to universe one address one. And that the gobo's in front of that. Now then, on to my breakout. You can see I have a small breakout and a big breakout right there. And what we're going to do is we just want to make sure that a label legend is there. But in fact, I'm just going to start one from scratch because whenever you build one from fixture types, it doesn't necessarily work out as well as you want it to. So we're going to go to label legend manager and we're going to go to add. And now for this one, I only need circuit name, uh, cable and instrument type. Why is instrument type important for me? Well, instrument type delineates what type of breakout it is or a cable head or anything else. Like every device that I have custom built, I have them custom named specific, not only for the manufacturer, but also for the company that supplies them. So I can always know, hey, I'm using this company, their breakouts are this length, so on and so forth. In this case, this is a 10 foot breakout. So I'm turning on cable. And selecting right reading, I've got circuit name, set in right reading, and instrument type, and right reading. And I'm also going to say that I want to use a single label in 3D only. Um, I'll go from there, just making sure that everything is left, right, or center. But we don't have to define that here. We can define that anywhere else. And I want to make sure that the use layout symbol is active as well. I'm going to say, well, I got a name at first, and then I'm going to say, OK. Uh, I'm also going to add just this thing in here so it signifies that I've created it, because sometimes there's a lot of people that have access to these drawings, and everybody imports their label legends in, and so it just helps me find mine whenever I get into a drawing. Now, as you can see, I have small head, big head, and the options that I've selected. Now I've just got to place them, size them, 
and make sure that we're all good to go. So instrument type for me, I got to turn it 90 degrees to see how this is going to react. And I see that it is going to set the top that way, but you know, that's perfect for me. I'll get it in there close and we're going to check the size, the font size here in a second. Get cable close, turn that 90. I'm going to try turning it negative 90, but the way that Vectorworks works is you can set it up in your options to show everything in a specific orientation whenever it comes to text, so it's readable. Sometimes it will flip it whenever you don't have that on, and in this case, it could actually flip it over the Y, which would turn the cable into an almost unreadable style. Um, it just flips it and reverses it in a way sometimes. Uh, but now I got the size that I like. I'm going to position these labels, you know, one on one side of the neck and then the other on the other side of the neck and get them as squared up as possible. Okay, cables placed right, instrument types placed right, circuit name. I'm going to move that. I like to put it in the center of that head there, but I also need to scale it down. So once I get it centered right there, yeah, we're just, just about perfect. And I think I'm going to go point down smaller. Let's go with three. Uh, that seems like perfect. Can fit three numbers in there, no problem. Okay, now I want to put it on my big head up there that is more visible on drawings whenever I do plots and you're zoomed out. So you can't necessarily zoom in, you know, on a piece of paper to read what that says. So we're going to make something bigger, get it centered up. And I'm going to set the point size. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Now then, I want to change the class of this. What's, something's cool with my breakout head is that big version. I call it an oversized class. So I'm going to assign circuit name as well to that oversized class. So that way, whenever I turn them on and off, they go off together. And I'll show you a little bit about that here in a second. Now then, I'm going to go... And I still have that selected, so I'm going to select that label legend that I want. And it applies to it. Now, see, I figured right reading was going to get us at some point. So let's go into the label. Well, let's check and see. So if I turn it, no, it doesn't turn it at all. It just stays right reading in the drawing. So we're going to go check and flip these. No, that doesn't work. So we're going to go ahead and go on back to entertainment, lighting, and label legend manager, select our breakout, edit 2D lay or edit 3D or fields, not 3D, turn off right rotating. And let's see if that works. Say done. Boom. Gets me exactly where I want it to be. And you can see that it's good on the zoomed in and the big head has it. Now, if I want to turn it off, boom, it's gone. Well, guys, that is a quick intro and in how to build label legends for your lighting fixtures. And uh, you know what? We're going to do one more. I'm going to go ahead and just copy that fixture. What I like to do is click, drag, press option and release. And that will drop another fixture right next to, right where you release your clicker from. And we're going to go search strike M's. No, oh, hold on, strike. I got to spell it. Of course, I'm making the voice recording after I've already made the video for you guys. So I'm a little slow on the mouse side there. But as you can see, it actually sized up pretty well on this, uh, except for, you know, strike M's don't really have gobos. So let's make a custom label legend for this device. Again, entertainment, lighting, and then we'll go to label legend, create label legend from instrument type, and then just select that all. And we'll call this one strike M. 
Of course, as Vectorworks has improved over time, you know, the label legends, they shrink, they get in right on the object as long as the object is drawn properly. But if not, then you definitely have to go in and make some more adjustments. So you can see we've made that. We're going to go edit the 2D layout. But now all these symbols are in there that aren't our strike M symbol. Those are just extra. We can delete those, get them out of the way. And we'll delete that gobo there as well. Leave everything else. That's the minimum that we need. And now we have our strike M. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is a quick down and dirty how to make a label legend for your lighting devices.